How's it going? I'm Boots, I play in Waster. We're on tour at the moment with Grayscale, Hot Mulligan and Lurk and today we're in Palatine near Chicago. I'm going to talk about a little bit about the gear that I use. A um, few venue constraints today, people doing sound checks and tight with a bit tight and stuff so I'm going to stand outside here in the snow. Um, but yeah, I've had this guitar since I was 15. It's a Gibson Les Paul classic. I might be biased but it is literally the nicest Les Paul I've ever played. Um, Scratch plate fell off recently because I had a little bit of crack there, but I actually kind of like it. it. Usually has a white scratch plate, taking it off. It was made in 2000 and 2008, I think. Um, it's they don't. I'm pretty sure they don't actually make these classics anymore like this. Um, but yeah, it's literally my favorite guitar. I also play Fender. I've got a Fender Jazzmaster at home. But uh, the reason I like this guitar so much is because a lot of Les Pauls have quite thick necks. Where because I play Fender as well, I do like thin necks. And this guitar has a slim taper neck. The radius of the neck is quite quite flat, and it's, it's, it plays very nice. Um, I take like quite. I take quite a lot of pride in setting up guitars, like I've worked as a guitar tech and stuff in the past, so I'm quite picky with how, how I set up my guitars. Um, you can probably see from there I play like super low, action's quite low, just so it's fast. I could do, a lot of Les Pauls have like a quite high, traditionally chunky, um, sort of a high chunky action, but I do like it quite low. Um, haven't really done much to this guitar to be honest, stock pickups, um, yeah, I know I've got quite a few friends who modify theirs, but I really haven't. I like to keep it sort of as it was. Um, on my other guitars, I modified, like my Jazzmaster, I modified a little bit. If you're familiar with those guitars, you'll know that it's got two halves of the guitar, lots of different controls. Um, and I've got a habit of, even with this guitar, flicking my pickup selector up while I'm playing. So what I've done with my Jazz, um, haven't got it with me, but I've just like gutted that guitar so it's literally volume control to output, no tone, nothing, taking the, the neck pickup out and just got the bridge pickup. But like I said, with this one, really haven't, haven't modified it at all. What I like to do live, pretty straightforward, volume all the way up, tone all the way up, bridge pickup. I rarely use my neck pickup, to be honest. Um, with because I'm using Kemper these days, the, the difference in tone I can get between my rhythm and lead doesn't really require me to get that neck pickup sound. I know a lot of people do pick, go, go to the neck for leads, but I just keep it straight. The type of music we're doing is, you know, it, it doesn't really require me to. I guess it's, it's down to taste as well, but yeah, I just like to keep it straightforward. Volume pickup, uh, volume and tone straight up. Um, I just use regular slinkies, Ernie Ball, shout out to them, they've looked after us for ages now. Yeah, regular slinkies, I did actually use the Paradigm ones for a bit because they sorted us out. They were sick as well, they've got like this whole scheme where they'll say, say that you'll never break a string and if you do, they'll give you like a whole new pack back. But yeah, pretty simple. Um, I play in standard. Um, a lot of our songs, especially from Red, Green or In Between or Screwed are actually played in like C sharp or D sharp. Um, I drop C, but I actually keep this in standard and my Kemper allows me to, to use the drop pedal function on there. So it's the guitar stays in standard and the, the Kemper does all the dropping for me. So like I just said, I've been using Kemper now for about two years. I used to play, when I first started, I was always a big Marshall guy. I used to go through a um, JVM 410 um, through two 412 cabs. Um, since moving over to Kemper, I don't use cabs anymore. We're on in-ears and stuff now. Um, I moved over to Orange before I went to, to Kemper and I've always liked that sort of, again, British sound, Marshall and Orange. But uh, since using Kemper, I've actually been, my main rhythm tone, I've been modeling a Buddha amp, um, which I'd never played through before and had never actually heard of. Um, funnily enough, one of my friends got that tone from Alex in All Time Low. So it's basically his tone. That's the best thing about Kemper. You can literally grab a tone on a memory stick, plug it in and use it. It's not that exact one, but it's it's like, it's basically the same. He looked at the settings. So yeah, main rhythm tone's a Buddha amp. And then for my lead tone, um, it's actually the lead tone that was used on um, Identity Crisis. I'm pretty sure it's a, it's a JCM 800 model. Um, and it's from Howard Benson, his pack. Um, like a lot of his packs, I, like, I use a lot of his tones. Um, really only use about two or three tones. I've got my main rhythm one that I've spoken about and my lead. 
Um, there's a kind of little a crunch that I use as well, which is just my main distortion tone, but dialed down, like eased off on the on the gain. Um, and sometimes for certain songs, I use like a proper low cut to get quite a thin sound. For example, in our song "Hide Everything Sharp," the first tone of that um, it's basically my main rhythm tone, but just like. EQ sort of cut, so it's really, really narrow EQ, all the low end taken off, and quite like a crunchy sound. But um, other than that, I don't use that many different tones. There's a couple of times where I, I dabble with like some really nice reverbs, some dreamy reverbs. Um, there's a, uh, my favorite reverb on the Kemper is called, there's a dual crystal and there's behind the curtain, and it's sort of got like a pog sort of sound, because you like that synth, that dreamy sort of reverby sound, which I, I like to play with. Um, yeah. So yeah, we've just been talking about the Kemper. Um, it's got it on crisis here. So what I do is I actually have a, um, a scene or a patch for each each song. Um, so I've got one here for crisis. So my main rhythm tone, the amp I'm using is a Buda SD30, and then the cabinet I'm using is a 212 cabinet, cranked. Um, my lead tone is the like I say, HB Howard Benson. The amp is a Marshall Tremolo 50 watt, and the cab is a Wizard Snake 412. So they're the two tones that I mainly swap swap between. Let's find one that's got one of that dreamy tone. Oh, actually, what I want to talk about our song "Silly Me." I actually model. I've got an acoustic um, patch, and uh, I'm really, really, really like that patch. A lot of people that hear it are like, "Please send it me." Um, I basically got it off Rig Exchange and then edited it a bit. It's like super compressed. I can't show you it right now, but it's uh, very lifelike for an electric guitar to sound like a, an acoustic. It's pretty impressive. Um, it's another one. Duh, duh, duh. Let's find a song that I use my dreamy one. Duh, duh, duh. This sort of dreamy poggy sound that I was talking about. To achieve that, I use um, this dual crystal delay and then the legacy reverb. There's one on here called Behind the Curtain, which I really like as well. Um, when I talked earlier about that thin tone that I use, like a sort of thin, crunchy, sometimes, like I said, I just roll off the distortion on my main tone. But there's this classic foxy tone that is actually, I think it's another one of Howard Benson's ones that we've used on the album. And it's just a really like thrashy, like not so distorted, but just like, yeah, crap tone basically and I use it sort of more as an effect for a short part of a song rather than my actual main tone so we're actually using um, we play to backing tracks um, considering there's only one guitarist in the band what normally happens is that the uh, the leads are on the backing track and when it comes to solos I'll swap over more of a coping mechanism at the moment whilst we don't have a second guitarist we always did used to um, I know a lot of bands are using tracks these days um, we're using a, um, a system called by Cymatic called the LP16. And what, what it does is gives us the ability to give the front house engineer all of our tracks in stereo stems. So we'll get stereo percussion, guitars, things, sub, stuff like that. What I really like about this, if you look here, I've got a MIDI cable coming out of the track system that actually goes into my Kemper. Um, I still use the actual Kemper Profiler remote just as a backup and to hit my tuner on and stuff. But what our track system does is that um, when it's when Jeff, the drummer we've got playing with us at the moment, hits the pedal and starts a song, my Kemper will automatically go to the song that I've set it through MIDI and it changes my patch. So if I'm going from rhythm to starting to play a solo, I don't have to touch anything with my Foot, it just automatically does it so that's something we just started doing recently which is very nice I know um, Grayscale will do the same thing a lot of people are doing that now. yeah so what we're doing these days for monitoring wise is we're using a, a Behringer system which is what a lot of bands seem to be doing because it is quite affordable basically we run all our own in-ears mixes now off laptops and uh, iPads and phones so basically we'll rock up to a venue plug in there's a split that basically gives the front of house their stuff and our our, our stuff say it stays completely separate so we're actually able to turn up to a venue and have relatively same mix every day depending on the room there will be some slight adjustments you know but we just put, plug our ears in load the scene up on the computer and our monitors are done and we don't have to worry about using a different sound guy every day using monitors I've always been super like anal about my hearing and it scares me to think of having like an in-house guy, no shame to them, doing my, my in-ears, having someone like control something that's so close to your eardrum like scares me so I made that, we decided to make that leap like a couple of years ago now and like it's probably been the best thing for us we've done monitoring wise, definitely wouldn't go back.
Thanks so much for checking out my gear today, it's been cool. Um, yeah, if you want to check us out online, wasterband.com, wasterband, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that. We'll have some mu new music out for you soon.